I'm sitting on my porch of my little off-grid cabin that I built. It's completely log constructed, has a tin roof, and I just built a little log workshop in the back that serves as a wood shelter also. So it's dual purpose. I've had a lot of people ask me pretty much why I chose to build a cabin like this and what made me build this style and why also off grid because stuff is pretty far away and it comes with also a lifestyle so I don't have power here I know some people do but I don't I wish that I would maybe this year I'll get some better solar panels better batteries inverters and so on but for now I have an emergency power generator but on days like today it is minus 50 outside it is extremely extremely cold uh, the engine I just can't crank it by hand and it doesn't have an electric start so uh, yeah I pretty much run this place with oil lanterns I'll give you guys a quick tour around and I'll explain along the way what I went through building this thing and what made me choose the place that I built the cabin and pretty much what started the turning point on me building this entire thing. Cabin life really isn't for everybody but for me I wanted a little log cabin since I was pretty much a child. It's just pretty cool in the movies and western movies and stuff you always see the hunter or trapper and they have little semi-permanent shelters so that's what I had in mind when I was building this I knew that I wasn't gonna have any power and that it was gonna be pretty tough building something like this alone so along the way my dad started to help me so obviously if you're alone and uh, you are pretty far off grid it's something to consider I did not have any machinery I had to carry all the logs on my shoulders or drag them with a the rope on the ground so there is videos are a year or two a, a little bit older and there's videos of me doing that if you're interested go check out my older videos it is an entire project in itself really just planning something like this for me I kind of just put sticks in the ground and made myself a little square and decided to start building right then and there so I will stay behind the camera for this part, but you guys can see I have a massive pine tree over the cabin. So as long as it doesn't fall over and crush the cabin, I'll be fine because I wanted something to, for one, stop the wind, the droopy branches over the cabin help a lot. Mo most importantly would be to catch the snow during the winter. As you can see, it's covered in snow, it's doing a great job. And about to some spots, five to eight feet of snow, I have maybe 16 inches on my roof. So it really, really, really helps out a lot. So pretty much that was a deciding factor for me. And I thought it would look awesome also to have a big tree uh, just leaning over the cabin. So the term off-grid living is thrown around these days just because a lot of social media influencers and such claim to be off-grid so a whole lot of different meanings came about for you off-grid might mean something and for me it might be different here I'm maybe 20 minutes to half an hour away from a village so a grocery store a gas station pretty much everything I need there's also a hardware store which is very very cool but I tend to not go there very often and I do not live here permanently, but when I'm here, I try to stay as long as possible. So that is something also to consider in case of emergency, how far are people away? <coughs> Man, the air is so cold, it's freezing my lungs. But how far are people? Is it going to bother you being alone? If you're in the woods, depending on where you build your cabin, because some people like in the fields, alone they might buy land and go in the fields or in the woods or it all depends on the individual but the the rarity of uh, just seeing somebody else if that's okay with you then go ahead 
that's another point to consider because in case of emergency, you kind of need to know what you're doing and to not really panic. That being said, if you're far from people, it might mean you're far in the bush, so the walk might be long. Can you get a vehicle? Can you get gas for your vehicle? Can you get power if you need to jump your vehicle or boost the battery? It's something all to consider. For me here, I walk from the road, so I'm on my own private land, so I don't have to worry about other people, hopefully. <laughs> I, I cross my fingers every day. But yeah, I'm on my own land. I know some people build on public land. Personally, it's just not my thing, but I know that sometimes budget could be an issue, and that's why people, they go with the cheapest option. Depending on what you want to do with your build, now the subject is off-grid living. So whether it be a small cabin, you're building a bigger cottage for your family, what have you, uh, like I just mentioned, cheaper isn't always better because you could be cost effective. That's why I like to call it cost effective because you get the best deal on things, which is okay. But depending on the material that you get, sometimes you, you might, I guess you might get screwed over because there's a reason why stuff is just more expensive. And if you do your research, on the material or the tools you want or what have you. Sometimes a made in China tool is gonna do the job for a like a, a once a year use, but sometimes better steel, better carbon, etc. Like a knife, let's say. People always say about their knives, oh I have an expensive knife, it's high carbon, blah blah blah. Good for you, but if somebody <laughs> doesn't use their knife that often, it might not be that much of a big deal for them for it to be a little bit cheaper. But for materials for example, my entire cabin, if you see planks, what's the, the visual side of things, every, every plank that you could see is uh, pine. So I went to a sawmill and I got them all custom cut. I wanted the widest ones possible. My front porch that I was just sitting on in the previous clip, I milled those myself with my saw so I know they're good quality. They aren't as straight, but I know it's good wood because I cut the tree. And I did it myself, so I'm pretty proud of that. So like I said, you have to consider, is it worth I had already had a saw, I bought a really big saw. I bought a sawmill and I cut down the tree. So is it worth it for, for me to do that? At the time it was, because I just bought, like I said, a cheap mill on Amazon to, just to try to make my own planks. So I knew I wasn't gonna build an entire cabin out of planks. If I was, I would, just get them milled by professional because they would have been straight. They would all have been uniform and it probably would have been cheaper than me buying like a $30,000 mill. So <coughs> it, like I said, cost really expensive, really important. Somewhere where I personally didn't cheap out and I'll give you guys a look at that. So camera here is a little bit lower. Everything, like I said, the floor in the cabin, the doors, everything is pine. All of these boards for the roof of the cabin themselves because the workshop is pine. The cabin itself is all 100% cedar. So I paid pretty good money for cedar around here. It is pretty rare and expensive especially for good size ones. So I paid a pretty penny for those planks at the mill, but the guy cut them for me and it was really, really nice. So uh, to put things in perspective, I believe it was $150 for 10 planks. So 15, uh, I, 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 from memory, I think it was 13 to $15. So let's just say rounded up 150 bucks for 10 planks for the roof, for 10, 10 foot planks. So yeah, and they're about six to eight inches each. So that was pretty much one of the biggest expenses that I went to. Uh, that, that was pretty expensive for me. I have planks, like I said, I didn't cheap out cedar. I, have, I went and bought some tar paper. So just like on a normal tar roof on a modern house, I put that on top. Plus here, I did not go and splurge on tin 
for a roof. This is actually pool tin that I found in the garbage, so that was free. Also the same deal for the workshop. So yeah, I have triple layer on the roof. I haven't seen any leak yet. Everybody told me it was overkill, just put planks and tin, but I just wanted to make sure that nothing was getting in. So yeah, and it's, it also insulates it pretty well. Switching subjects over here. <laughs> Move, move on from the money side of things now talk about a little bit more about the power situation so how are you going to get energy you have solar which is super popular which I wish this year I'll hopefully save up and buy one or two solar panels with batteries but batteries are extremely expensive there is gas or so power generator and if you have if you're planning on building we're talking about cabins also a cabin if you're planning on building your cabin off-grid and have a government style i don't know how where you live the power comes from but if it comes from a power pole then good for you this section doesn't really concern you if you have uh, a town or city funded power source well that's great but for me, I don't have any power. Like I said, power generator for emergencies. I used to have a solar panel, but now my battery is right behind you guys and it is frozen solid because it isn't a proper battery. But no power, so now for food preservation, I have this cellar right here. That does not freeze at all. I have water bottles in there and nothing freezes. It's awesome. As mentioned before, it's minus 50 today and nothing is frozen in there. It's about three three feet deep, about the length of my legs. So yeah, uh, pretty cool. That's, I really didn't really have another alternative. I can't have a fridge, I can't have anything. So I like to have water here for emergencies. I'll bring some more the next time that I, I, I come here, I guess, because I walk here so I'm not going to bring a full like 12 pack of water bottles in my backpack. It's just not practical and way too heavy. So I'll wait until I have my snowmobile or my ATV in the spring. As for lighting in the cabin, I have oil lanterns. So the only thing I need to worry about buying is oil. So another, I guess, cost effective <laughs> way of lighting your way across the night would be oil lanterns because fuel depending on what you put if you use kerosene it's even less expensive but i find it doesn't smell too nice so i buy actual lantern fuel but i pretty much run oil lanterns year round this is another type of oil lantern very popular the diet brand they are a little bit more expensive than cheaper ones, but they work just fine. And this one is quite large, so it gives off a good amount of light. As you can see, it pretty much lights up a whole wall almost all by itself. All their alternatives are little candles, but those have a very short life. And candles these days are pretty expensive unless you have your own wax that you get for pretty cheap and make them yourself stores are selling them for quite a large amount of money with no power sometimes a little bit hard to see but i use my fireplace here to cook in the summer i might cook outside if it gets too hot but right now i just cook the steak and potatoes on here and it works awesome everything came out nice but like I said, sometimes now what you guys are seeing is with just the light of my oil lantern. So no power means uh, no electric heating. So you need to get wood over, over, around these parts, really not a problem. I cut down my own firewood. I have more than enough trees, uh, more than I could ever dream for. So I'm thankful for that. A little fireplace, tiny little cabin. It really, really heats up quick, even on days like today. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them, or I might even make another video. But for now, sadly, I can't make 
this video any longer because my battery is dying. Like I said before, it's minus 50 outside with the wind, it's freezing cold. The battery just keeps dying. Hopefully I answered a few questions. I'll see you guys in the next video. Subscribe if you like the content. And remember to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. It really, really helps out a lot. I try to post videos every Friday. Thanks for watching.